Hi all, it's Michelle from Cozy Egg, and this is episode 140. Today is Thursday, August 8th, 2024, and I am here once again to share with you my progress on my stitching, and then I have some other uh, things that I'm going to show you. So, uh, We'll just kind of dive right in. I'm going to do my typical monologue here at the beginning, um, my warm up bit, so to speak, and then we'll talk about the stitching. So uh, it has been about a month and a half since I recorded last. I think I recorded right before the summer solstice or on the summer sol sol solstice. Um, might have been the day before. Anyway, doesn't matter, but <laughs> it's been about a month and a half and there has been a lot going on. So uh, I think the last time I uh, recorded, I talked a little bit about Ramsey's and his diabetes and um, he was just newly diagnosed. So we have been working to get his um, insulin levels, you know, adjusted and one of the things that we did uh, to that end was the vet um, actually used a freestyle Libre sensor on him, um, which they attached. And then we were able to get uh, readings throughout the day and night uh, for two weeks uh, so that she could easily see what his glucose levels look like, and she could make um, adjustments based on that um, for his insulin dosage. So we think we're at a good dosage now, and um, we'll just continue with that for the time being. But he did have to wear a t-shirt, which he was not super thrilled with. <laughs> um, so he did have to wear a t-shirt for the two weeks that he had the sensor on just so that he didn't knock it off or mess with it. Uh, so you probably saw in some of my video um, blog footage <coughs> that he had his little t-shirt on, that's why. So, but he seems to be doing pretty well. Um, we are trying to also give Tut lots of attention because he is uh, feeling a little left out, I think, because Ramses has been getting so much attention. So we're trying to give Ted a little extra attention. Um, so that has been going on. Uh, the other big thing is that I am changing jobs. I am leaving the job that I have been in for 14 years and moving to a new position with a new company, which is exciting and nerve wracking and scary at the same time. And, you know, I am sad to be leaving someplace that I've been for so long, but I think it was a necessary, a necessary move. So I, uh, I'm, I actually took vacation this week. I had planned to take vacation the week of my birthday, but that week is actually going to be my first week at the new job. So I actually took vacation this week so that I could try to get a few things done, maybe relax a little bit. And, you know, all that good stuff. So yeah, next week is going to be probably a little crazy, but it'll be my last week but there you go so uh those are kind of the big things that have been going on or are continuing to go on so there you have it um other than that uh i do want to say just kind of right at the front that uh we, i had the first discussion for the book club uh, we had that at the end of July, and we discussed uh, Lee Bardugo's The Familiar, which I think we had an excellent discussion. I loved the book. Others did not. And so it was, it, that made for some really good conversation, which 
is exactly what book club is about. So um, I was happy to do that, happy for the folks that joined and um, really looking forward to the next one. So I am uploading a separate video again to talk a little bit about uh, the book for next time. But just um, quickly, I wanna say at the beginning, in case you don't stay all the way to the end, um, that the next book is A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle Jensen. And this is a fantasy book uh, that has uh, kind of a background in Norse mythology. So I'm very excited about that and looking forward to it. And the next book club discussion is September 26th. So if you are interested in being part of that Zoom uh, discussion, please do go into the site and RSVP. You can go to the events tab, RSVP for, um, for that. And I look forward to seeing you there. So very exciting, very exciting. All right, let's get into it. So I don't have any finishes to show you, which should come as absolutely no surprise, but I did FFO something. So um, I posted this on my Instagram, but I of course wanted to show it to you here. I framed my Starry Moth. And so this is a design by the Blue Flower that was in Just Cross Stitch, I think. And um, it is a quote from Percy Shelley. And I absolutely love it. I loved stitching it. I stitched it on 40 count Kunzeit um, fiber on a whim, I think. Don't quote me on that. But all the details will be in the show notes, provided that I ever upload show notes. So anyway, stitched in DMC. But I uh, stitched this, this was my leap day start. And so I started on leap day and it was the perfect piece uh, because that's kind of a liminal day. So uh, I was really happy to get this stitched. And then it's just been sitting around. I've been looking for a frame for it because it is a little difficult to find an octagonal frame, but I found one and I loved the look of this. It has this sort of Victorian vibe to it. So this is a new frame. It's not an antique, um, but I loved the look of it. So, and it just has a easel back. So very, very pleased with that. And it now sits in my office so that I can look at it. Uh, next to my other moth pieces, my La Luna and um, my Sucropia moth. So, yay for FFOs. <laughs> it's finally something's framed. So, um, as far as, and I haven't had any new starts, as far as whips go, I have only stitched on two things. I have been working on my model stitch, which I will show you here in a minute. And I've also continued to work um, on His Eyes on the Sparrow, which is my Sunday stitch along with Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I am not the best Sal partner, <laughs> but I try. Um, I did not, I wouldn't say that I even had enough progress on it to warrant showing it to you. So I will show it to you next time so that maybe I can have a little more progress, but I do continue to get that out on Sundays and work on it. And I love, um, you know, messaging back and forth with Olivia to see her progress and um, show her mine what little of it there is. Usually it's me saying, 
I have no idea what this animal is that I stitched, but I stitched it. <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about Henrietta. So, um, as I have mentioned before, this is a, an antique sampler that I am reproducing and I have it all charted out. And so I am starting the model stitching. I have a date in mind that I would like to release this. It is fast approaching. I don't know that I'm going to have this done by the date that I have in my head. Um, and dates and numbers are very special to me. So if I miss that date, I will have to think very hard about what my fallback date is. But that is part of what I am doing this week while I am on vacation is other than going to a million doctor's appointments, I am also trying to stitch on this as much as possible. So um, we'll just see how it goes. But at some point in the near future, I will be releasing this as soon as I finish it. And let me just tell you, it has been crumpled up in the Q-snap with a grime guard. I did not iron it. So apologies if that offends you. But I'm stitching this on 40 count B's knees by Seraphim with NPI silks. And so I don't remember exactly where I was last time, um, but this sampler to me reads very late summer, just going into fall. Um, you've got that honeysuckle border at the top and um, then you've got some, you know, kind of more fallish colors that come in just below that with the parrots and the little berry bushes that they're sitting on. So here is where I'm at. And I've basically worked my way down this side. So I'll show you a little bit closer up. There's a berry bowl up there at the top. I love the white outline on the basket. This little squirrel on the lemon tree, which moves into some bee scups and some bees. And these little flowers here are satin stitched. And then there's a big berry basket, berry bowl, and a big crown, more flowers, and then the start of the house. And the house is basically right down at the bottom of the sampler. So while I do have a good bit more fabric down here, this is basically the bottom of the sampler. So, and I was very excited to get to the house because the house is actually one of the first things that drew me to the sampler. Um, when my friend uh, showed it to me and said, you know, would you like to reproduce this? The house was the thing that caught my eye initially because of the smoke coming out of the little chimneys. And it's a brick house, which who doesn't love a brick house? Um, so I just love it. I love it. So that is where we're at on Miss Henrietta. And I've got all sorts of threads hanging, etc. So very excited uh, to get this one stitched. I'm enjoying every second of stitching it, honestly. Um, even though I'm, I've kind of put myself under a time crunch, I'm still, I love stitching on this. It's, the colors are just beautiful and um, Henrietta just added some really fun motifs. So, and it just seems, you know, because we're starting to move into the late summer, it just seems really appropriate, so, and timely. 
So that is, that's it. That's all I've been working on. <laughs> so we're 15 minutes in and I've showed you everything I have to show you. Now, um, so my friend Yvette has been bugging me <laughs> nicely <laughs> to share my uh, finishes that are not framed. And I told her, you know, I did a floss tube on that, like, <coughs> January of 2023, I think. And she's like, no, you need to do a video. So I brought those to show you. And um, it's basically like the Project Roll of Shame is where we're at. So... I will walk through those and um, show you what I have in here. And this may be a little unwieldy, so let's see what I can do as far as Because I, I do have them all rolled up in this project roll. So let's see if maybe I can. Unroll it this way. All right. So these are. Probably. But maybe not in reverse order of when I finish them. So most recent going further back, but that may not be the case. I'm just saying that based on what's on top. So the first piece that I have, and my intention is to at some point get these all framed. Yeah, it would be nice to have them hang on my wall because I finished them. And because they're in this project roll, I forget that I had finished them, but here we go. All right, so this one is Ship of Life by Needle Love Designs. And I stitched this last summer. I borrowed the chart, it's an old out of print um, chart. I stitched it on flannel flower by Fox and Rabbit with the called for DMC. And I just love this piece so much. I'm going to attempt to keep these sort of, you know. All right, this is Primitive Needle Moon Sick. And this is on Fox and Rabbit. Something. I don't know. But I stitched this as part of the full moon sow um, that several people were doing and they were specifically stitching this piece, but they have stitched other moon related pieces on the full moon. I just love this. Love it. Okay, uh, this is Ink Circles, I think. Uh, Athena Noctua. I love this piece so much and I have been on the hunt for a frame for this to go in. I was actually looking for a frame for this when I found the one for the owl, the moth. Um, I love this so much and I really want this hanging on my wall. But Square frames are hard to find. Case in point here is Primitive Needle, Salem Village. 
I think this is on 40 count dapple. And I made some adjustments to the colors. But the, the thread that I used to stitch the word Salem Village, I think was called No, I can't think what it was. But it was an interesting thread that I don't think I've ever used that kind of went from green to purple. It was subtle, but I really liked the way that it looked. Obviously my memory is fading me, failing me. I can't even get my words correct. But there is Salem Village. Um, this is Colonial Garden by Plum Street Samplers, stitched on 40 count black something. This piece was the hugest, biggest pain in the ass to stitch, but I love the way it looks. I stitched this for Eric for our anniversary one year with the intention that it would be hung in our bedroom with the other pieces that I've stitched for him. <laughs> like I said, it's the project roll of shame. This was a stitch along that I did with Emily C. and Diana It Is Kismet Stitches and Michelle Bendy a few years ago. I love it. And here's, here's an abandoned Blackbird sampler that I started at some point. But yeah, love that again with the square things. This is, this is where all my freaking primitive needles are. This is Sampler Sisters of the Thread by Primitive Needle. I need to go in and put some more uh, initials in there. My originally, original intention for this piece was this piece was designed for uh, Lisa designed it for uh, a, our group of friends and my intention was to have each one of them stitch their initials on it and send it around I stitched the L in the center for um, Lisa and then my intention was to send this around to each of them to have them stitch their initial on it but i decided that was probably just asking for trouble mailing this through the mail system that many times so i just need to go in and put the other initials on there and i'd really love to frame this because i really love it so Uh, this is Mary Snow by Hands Across the Sea. And this was, I think it was a Christmas Eve start, December 15th, I don't know, um, with Christy from Cross Hatch Colts. And I love this. I fell in love with it the second that I saw it and had to stitch it. I loved the, the red and green, so it felt very Christmassy, but then also I love this sort of ice blue um, in there. And of course the swans. And her name is in four-sided stitch. So not a big sampler. I really enjoyed stitching that. And then I have some little ones. This is an old Blackburn Designs. 
I think it's called Winter Delivery, maybe. And it has beads on it. You can see I did this in 2018. It is still here. <laughs> Not framed. This was a piece uh, that was in Sample and Antique Needlework Quarterly. Just a little French sampler that I stitched in a hundred, hundred threes. It was my first time using hundred threes. And I stitched this, I don't know, 2008, nine, I don't know, something like that. Pretty. Another primitive needle. <laughs> Here is my blackened sky. This was my comfort stitching for so long. Like every time I was just in need of something that would cheer me up and make me calm. This was the piece that I went to. I love this piece so much. Love it. And I stitched it on the called for vintage pair by Lakeside with the called for pure palette silks. Okay, here was another sal that I did with Emily and Diana and Michelle Bendy. This was a, this was in one of the Blackbird Designs books. I think this is called like Partridge or something. He needs to be framed for fall. Um, this is, so when everybody else was stitching the Brenda Gervais Coming to America piece, I was stitching this one. This is called Women of the Mayflower. And it's by Old Willow Stitchery. And it was originally charted in Old Willow Stitchery threads, which are no longer in existence. So I did my own color conversion and just picked my own colors. And I love how it turned out. Uh, this is a piece of linen that I dyed myself. And this is Plum Street Samplers Hello Eden. I love that. I love it so much. Especially that snake. And then on the other side of it, I have this self-isolating bat that was from Night Spirit Studio. Um, this was one of the Be Well and Stitch freebies uh, that came out at the beginning of COVID. And Emily C. and I both stitched this. And then this was one from Lucy Beam. Uh, this was a stitch along with uh, Christine Hollis Hands Create and Becky Socks for Mum. And um, I think actually Emily C started this at the same time too. Uh, but Becky and Christine often have a birthday stitch because both their birthdays are in October. And so 
This was the piece they chose that year, and this is called At First Cox Crow by Blackbird Designs. It's in the Sisters book, and I stitched it on 40 Count Weeks Cocoa, which is one of my favorite linens, actually. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Weeks linen, but I really love cocoa. And I think it turned out really well. I did change the moon. I just made it solid instead of putting a face on it. But I love this piece. I would love to have that framed and out. Um, this is a piece by Lottie Da called Margaret Cottom. And when this was released, it was released in three parts. And I kept up with each of the parts as they came out. Um, I remember stitching this when my dad was sick. Back in 2012. I love this one. I remember sitting and stitching with um, a group of friends that sadly I'm no longer friends with, but I have like a very vivid memory of sitting and stitching with them and getting a call from my mom who was at the hospital with my dad. It's funny how this, how pieces bring that up. I don't know for sure if I'm gonna frame this one I don't know for sure what I'm gonna do with it, but I love The Wizard of Oz, so I just had to stitch it. And this was by, hang on, I've got a cat who wants to come sit on this stuff. Um, Midsummer Night Designs, I think, called Primitive Wizard of Oz. It was a fun little piece to stitch. And like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna frame it or not, but it's in here. Um, no, mm -mm, you cannot come over here. This is a little piece um, that was designed by uh, one of the people in that group of friends that I'm no longer friends with. Uh, and I really love this piece. So, yeah. I love the colors in it. This is another primitive needle piece and this is a terrible waste of fabric, but at the time I don't think I knew any better. This is Earth Sampler um, by Primitive Needle. This is like one of the first pieces I ever stitched on 40 count. And I think this is on, I'm pretty sure this is picture this plus ale, although this is not what ale looks like anymore, but it's a sweet little piece. Another one that is square, but that I would like to have framed. Okay, and then I've got a couple bigger pieces here. This is the Crowned Bird Sampler by Plum Street. And this was designed for my guild um, a million years ago. And when we found out that Paulette was going to be coming back to the Guild to teach again, um, Becky, Socks for Mom, and I decided we should probably finish this. <laughs> so, yeah. I love that big red house. I did change the verse on it to um, a quote by Shakespeare.
And here's the rest of the quote. So it seemed appropriate for a crowned bird. And okay, this is the last piece. This is my anniversaries of the heart. And it seems like sacrilege that this is not framed, but yeah. So I don't remember when I finished this. I do remember that I stitched the block for my dad while he was sick, but then I think I put it away for a long while. And this, it's kind of a bittersweet piece to me. And so that may be part of why I have not framed it. It's probably part of why I haven't framed some of these other things, but yeah. So there's my anniversaries of the heart. In all its glory, I did, I recharted this block because it was just like an alphabet block. And I saw um, Siobhan had recharted hers to be something that was meaningful to her, so I recharted mine too. So, yeah. That's my final piece. Um, so those are all the things that have been finished and need to be framed. It's a lot. It's a little overwhelming. I probably just need to work on that. <laughs> so, all right. Let's see if I can move this. Okay, so there you go, Yvette. There's all my pieces. And if anyone wants to start a GoFundMe to, um, Pay for some framing by all means. Okay. Um, as far as plans go, like I said, I'm pretty much just going to be working on Henrietta for the foreseeable future and hopefully getting that finished and released. And um, I will talk about books briefly. So, okay, I'm back. So, uh, the last time I saw you, I was still in the midst of reading the Zodiac Academy series. I finished the last two books in that series. That was a lot. Um, and I will be honest with you, overall, I enjoyed the series. Uh, there was a lot that I really enjoyed about it. The last few books just burned me out like crazy. And I just sort of got to the point where I was like, I just need this to be done. <laughs> I'm ready for it to be finished. Um, so it took me a really long time to read the last book and the last book was like a thousand pages or something, which I read a thousand pages in, you know, a few days before, no biggie. But yeah, this, it took me a while. So 
uh, my friends that I am doing the buddy read with of the Zodiac series, we actually were going to go right into the next series um, that's like a, a spinoff, but decided we're just gonna, <laughs> we're gonna take a little break for now. Excuse me, for now. So we're gonna take a break. Um, and come back to it. So after I finished those, I did need to read my book for the Absinthe and Shadows Literary Society book club, which was Lee Bardugo's The Familiar, and I mentioned this at the beginning. Um, so we had our first discussion. I loved this. I thought it was excellent. Um, and there were mixed opinions about it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And while it is very different from Lee Bardugo's um, Hellbent or Ninth House books, which are the only one other ones of hers that I've read, uh, I think it's equally as good. So I enjoyed it very much. I recommend it. And I'm glad that I chose it for, um, for book club. Um, then I decided I needed, you know, some easy reading. So I picked up this book by my friend. Um, her, uh, name that she writes under is Diane Oren, and this is called Arrivals and Departures. And it's, this is her first book and it's a novella. It's three romantic short stories. So... This was a fun read. The only complaint that I have about it is that I wanted to know more. Like I wanted more story. Um, so, you know, there was just enough in the, um, you know, in the short story for, you know, kind of a, a meet cute sort of, you know, thing. And then that was it. <laughs> like, Diane, I need the rest of this. So, um, this was fun. Uh, I, you can get this on Kindle, um, or I think you can order, um, hardback. So, or paperback, I guess, hard copy is what I meant to say. So I do, I do recommend this. She has a, her first full length novel, um, that has now, uh, gone to editing. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, these are, they're very sweet you know, romance books. So recommend. And then after that, I didn't know what I was going to read because nothing sounded good. So I sort of went perusing uh, the library and found a book that I had had on my TBR. And I will be honest with you, I had sort of, you know, kind of in the back of my head earmarked this book to maybe be one of the, you know, book club choices. But, um, it was available to read, so I just read it. <laughs> so, sorry, book club, but, you know, and this is Allie Hazelwood Bride. And I have not read anything else by Allie Hazelwood, um, but I will now. I loved this book. I thought it was so good. It is uh, a paranormal romance and it's, uh, it's basically, you know, vampires and werewolves and humans and none of them get along and you, everybody has to stay in their own territory. Um, but the main character, Misery, is a vampire and she is basically um, set to marry uh, the alpha werewolf as sort of a peace treaty kind of situation. And it was really good. I 
zipped through it <laughs> like nobody's business which I kind of thought like my reading was broken after the whole Zodiac Academy situation but I zipped through this so fast and it was so good I really really enjoyed it um it's definitely spicy but vampires werewolves love it so recommend and now, uh, I was, so after I finished that, I was like, well, now what am I going to read? And then I looked at my calendar and realized that my book club, uh, the SGR, Sampler Guild of the Rockies book club, is in two weeks. So I was like, I should probably read that. So I picked up that book to read, and we are reading Jennifer Chiaverini's um, The Museum of Lost Quilts. And I have read several of these Elm Creek quilts books a million years ago. And so this is a new one for me, but you know, I I'm enjoying it. Um, it's not quite as compelling as the vampire werewolf story, but it's good. So I'm currently reading that and I have decided also that I need a stack of yellow and white quilts like immediately because reasons. So yeah, this book is actually making me want to quilt a lot. So maybe one of these days when I have time, I can do that. So I've started to read that and um, hopefully I can get that finished before book club. And then speaking of book club, I mentioned this at the beginning, but I will just mention it again because this is probably what I'll, you know, read in the very near future. A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle Jensen. Um, and this is the next pick for my book club, which we will have the discussion in September, at the end of September. So there's plenty of time to read it. But look at those pages. Look how pretty that is. Mm, love it. So that is what is on the reading agenda. And I did want to tell you about what I've been watching. So um, I've been trying desperately to catch up on stuff that I have DVR that has been on the DVR for we won't talk about how long. Um, because Eric reminds me of it every time he turns on the TV, but whatever. So, um, I recently, and this has been perfect. Like while I've been trying to work on this model, I've been trying to also get through shows. So I watched, um, the last season of His Dark Materials, which are based on, uh, the books by Philip Pullman. And so the first book is The Golden Compass. The second book is The Subtle Knife. And the third book is uh, The Amber Spyglass. And if you have never read those books, I cannot recommend them enough. Like, and if you go to uh, my Mistress of the House of Books website and look on the bookshelf, you will see Golden Compass, Subtle Knife, Amber Spyglot. They are so good. They are some of my favorite books ever. And so I was, you know, a little leery about the show um, doing justice to the books, but um, Philip Pullman, I believe, was highly involved in them. And the first two seasons, you know, were excellent. So obviously this last season uh, centered around, you know, the stuff that happens in the Amber Spyglass. And it was so good. And it's been a long time since I read that book. So there were things about it that I had forgotten. Um, but oh my God, I bawled my eyes out at the end. Like, and at several points before that, but so good highly recommend and well worth watching the series if you haven't so um yeah 
that was really good. The other thing that we had been watching was La the Lazarus Project, which uh, has to do with time travel. And I really thought it was an interesting show, but there were things about it that, you know, just really struck me. And there was one night that we were watching it and they quoted a line from Lord of the Rings. And I was like, okay, like you have my attention. Um, because it was just, it was almost like it was just in passing um, that only if you're familiar with Lord of the Rings would you have picked it up. But uh, it's a really interesting show. So if you're looking for something to watch, I recommend that one. Uh, and then I worked my way through season two of Interview with the Vampire, which again, you know, the Anne Rice um, books are some of my absolute favorite books ever. And we won't talk about Tom Cruise as Lestat, we just won't, but, um, I was, again, worried about how these, the show was going to do justice to the books. And again, I was so pleasantly surprised. And the first season was really good. This season, I think, was like even, you know, a level up from that. So it was very good, very worthwhile highly recommend. So, and again, I like bawled my eyes out at the, end of the end of the show. So, but it was very good. Uh, and so now I am working my way through, uh, the second season of House of the Dragon. And, uh, that is keeping me occupied. I've got like two episodes left, I think, but that is what I've been watching this week and uh, working on my my model stitch so also quite enjoyable so that's it that's all i've got for today um i'm going to uh put all of this stuff away <laughs> put this project roll of shame back in the back of the closet where we don't think about it and um, I will go back to working on Henrietta and reading my book for book club and watching House of the Dragon. So, and preparing for my new job. So, uh, but that's it for me. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you for, um, you know, coming back for all of your comments and thoughts and subscribes and likes and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you, appreciate you taking the time um, specifically to come and watch my videos because I know that there are 8 million floss tubers out there. Um, and so it's certainly hard to uh, pick and choose which ones you want to watch. So I always appreciate those of you that come and watch me and that recommend me to others. So thank you. All right. Well, that's it. Happy stitching and we'll talk again soon. Bye.